Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. So we're continuing on the story, and we're in chapter 6, which was entitled Wandering. So this morning is, when I first started that title, I, I was like, I'm going to ask you, so I'm wandering, are you still reading <laughs> your book? Are you behind? All right, that's my dad joke for this morning. All right, it's not very funny, is it? It's very punny. So this morning we do have communion. Uh, we're going to follow divine service one. Um, we change it up a little bit, so we'll sing this is the feast and a couple other things. But we have communion this morning, and we do it just like we have been. So for visitors, usher, uh, usher you out. I'll have the bread. First elder will have the individual cups. The second elder will have the common cup. So make sure they can see in your hand if you have the uh, cup in your hand or not, so they don't miss you for the wine. So with that, let's begin our worship with our first hymn. Please stand as you're able. We begin our worship this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Confess God who is faithful and just, who forgives us sins, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear these great words. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As they called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority alone, I therefore forgive all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. 
For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may direct and govern our hearts in all things, that we may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The first reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Numbers, chapter 13. And they told him, We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. However, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there, and the Malachites dwell in the land of Negev, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the hill country, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the Jordan. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we are. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Numbers chapter 14. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live and as all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, none of the men who have seen my glory 
and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have put me to the test ten times and have not obeyed my voice, shall see the land that I swore to give to their fathers, and none of those who despise me shall see it. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise as you're able. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because the widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you speak through me this morning. Lord, may the words that come from my mouth give honor to you and your holy word. Please guide me with your words to send and equip this flock. 
to grow your family and show your love. I ask all of this in the name of our crucified Savior who died and rose for our sins. Amen. Hello, friends. So, you know, every once in a while I tell you when I see something, I save it in this file for later on. Well, I've been saving this comic for a long time. I don't know if you've ever seen it. So Moses lost in the desert, year 40. The people keep saying, recalculating, recalculating. You see they're making turns, and Moses is in the front. Knock it off, right? Well, chapter 6, the story, covers 40 years, right? The Israelites are out wandering around the desert. Moses is leading them. Moses is still following the commands of God, but the people think Moses is just wandering. They think Moses doesn't know where he's going. The people think we certainly need a better leader than this. Remember when garments first came out? When they first came out, instead of having to have a map and read the street signs, you just type the address in, right? And that voice came on and directed you to exactly where you wanted to go. Well, if you made a wrong turn or you went on the route, the voice would come on and tell you, recalculating, right? Recalculating. Recalculating when you missed a turn, you know they're on your right path to your destination. Do you ever notice what the Garmin didn't say? Hey, you missed a turn. What are you doing? Or... Why don't you stop and ask for directions, right? The Garmin just says, recalculating, in this very subtle, calming voice, as if to say, it's okay. It's okay. Help, let me help you get you back on track. Most of the time when we used the Garmin, when I used it, I didn't know where I was going. The road was unfamiliar to us. The Garmin very gracefully got us back on course so we could ri- arrive at our selected destination. You see, the Israelites knew where they were supposed to go, Canaan, the promised land, the ma- land flowing with milk and honey. God made a covenant, a promise to deliver them there. And, to, and, and they are still on this journey to the promised land. The Israelites thought this journey from Egypt to Canaan would take just a few months but it's going to take 40 years. Each time the Israelites see Moses make a turn, they feel he's not leading them on a direct path to the promised land. And when they see that, they start to question and grumble and complain. There goes Moses taking a wrong turn again. Doesn't Moses know where he's going? Did they forget that God was leading Moses? Moses was this faithful servant to God. And he listened to the voice of God as he led his people. Yet the Israelites questioned him over and over and over again. God had declared his covenant with his people, and now it's time to move to the promised land. If the people will just follow his lead and do as he commands, the land will be theirs. So we talked about last week, God gave them commands and rules to follow. It wasn't like the Israelites had this long list of tests and things they had to go through to get to the promised land. The Israelites, although they, are, although they are God's chosen people, His mighty nation, they are a sinful people. And sinful people rarely follow God's lead or listen to His plan. They become impatient and they become scared. Many times we read, they put on these rose-colored glasses, didn't they? And they look back at their life in Egypt while complaining about Moses. About everything from living conditions to what's on the menu. God takes them to the brink of the promised land. And he has Moses send out 12 spies to confirm what he had been telling them. All those spies come back and agree the land is incredible. It's just like God described it. But only two of those spies, Caleb and Joshua, say, let's go take the land. Because of Israel's lack of faith and rebellion, they're going to spend 40 years in the wilderness. 
If you thought the complaining was bad before in chapter 6, or chapter 5, chapter 6 is going to get much worse. You haven't heard anything yet. yet. Think about this in comparison. I was trying to think of a comparison. Think you, your family's been planning this trip for a long, long time to this destination you've all wanted to go to, right? It takes you many days to get there, a place you've been eager to visit. But because you mis- misbehaved on the way, there's going to be a little detour. You complained that you didn't have your bed to sleep in. You complained about the food. You question if the person driving even knew where they were going, even though they had a Garmin. So dad drives back towards home. And instead of taking four days to get there, it's now going to take you 40 days. And when you get to the destination, some of you who are not are not going to be able to see what you've waited so long to see because of the way you act. This is following through on that threat, that great threat that Dad always made from the front seat. I'll turn this car around, right? God made good on his promise to turn this car around. After this generation passes and it's time to enter the promised land, but the same conditions are going to apply. Follow God's lead and do as he commands. You see, the promise is the journey he takes you on. That promise is the right one. So as we look at the people of Israel, we can readily see that their story is our story. We are impatient. We are scared. We're selfish. And we wander. We also wonder... Why am I going through all of this? God, on the other hand, knows the complete story. That of the Israelites and ours, God still gives the same direction to us. Follow his lead and do as he commands. Because we are going to wander, aren't we? And we are going to wonder. We wonder, what is God up to? We wonder, why is God taking you the way he's taking you? We wonder why God would place different burdens and trials in our life. God is telling the Israelites, and he's telling us, it's okay to wonder. But it's not okay to complain against God. It's not okay to turn your back on God. It's not okay to place more faith in yourself than you do in God. Just a reminder, God is not telling us we have to be perfect. Even Moses wandered. When God told the Israelites that he was going to give them meat to eat, after the Israelites complained about eating the manna, we read in chapter 6, God responds to Moses, you shall not eat just one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but a whole month. So Moses hears God tell him, he's going to feed the Israelites 30 days. He's going to feed them meat. In the back of his mind, he knows that a census had just been taken, and there's 600,000 men. And that doesn't account for the women and children. Moses tells God, There may be as many as 2 million people. And you're going to provide meat every day for all these people? And in my mind, it's like God didn't, like God doesn't know how many people are already there. He knows, doesn't he? And God responds, this great verse, is the Lord's arms too short? Is the Lord's arms too short? Because Moses doesn't think that God can feed 2 million people for 30 days. God's basically saying in this verse, Moses, you're underestimating me. Do you remember I'm the same God that parted the Red Sea? I'm the same God that freed you from Egypt. I'm the same God that gave you manna every day to eat. 
I'm the same God that has been taking you as we wander to the promised land. How many times do we sell God short? How many times do we think God can't do that? How many times do we put more faith in ourselves than we do in God? You know, there are times, and I admit it, that I'm not brave enough or have enough faith to ask God to do only what God can do. How many times have you seen something that seemed impossible become possible only by the hand of God? In your prayers and requests to God, maybe He wants you to be a bit more brave. Have more faith. Faith that surpasses your understanding. And ask Him for things only He can deliver. God was very intentional in His answer back to Moses. God didn't say, you don't think I can do this? God says, you think my arms are too short. This image was very important to the Israelites. Because the arm including the hand was the image for God's saving power to the Israelites. Think about it in our creeds. You say that Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. The right hand is the favored one for the Israelites. And our Savior sits at the right hand of His Father. So in chapter 6 today, we're just two months into the second year. So we're just about one year after we were in chapter 5. The Israelites have been freed, they're out, and they're just outside the promised land. So as I said, God tells Moses, send one person for every tribe in the promised land and report back on what you find. The selected twelve go in the promised land, they spend 40 days and 40 nights there, and they return with their report. All twelve agree. The promised land is just as God says, flowing with milk and honey. But only two tell the people to go in the land, Caleb and Joshua. They tell the Israelites to go into the land despite the armies and the people who tower over us, because God is certainly with us. How do the Israelites respond? They throw up their hands, they want to go back. We want a new leader. If only we died in Egypt. We should choose a new leader and go back. What does God do? He's going to send them back, but not what they had planned. None of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and yet have put me to the test these ten times and have not obeyed my voice, shall see the land that I swore to give to their fathers. And none of those who despise me shall see it. That's not enough. God goes on to say, Your dead bodies shall fall in the wilderness. And and of all your numbers listed in the census from 20 years old and upward who have grumbled against me. And then he tells them their punishment. And your children shall be shepherds in the wilderness 40 years and shall suffer for your faithlessness until the last of your dead bodies lie in the wilderness. According to the number of days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, a year for each day, you shall bear your iniquity 40 years, and you shall know my displeasure. God has most certainly turned this car around, hasn't he? We are recalculating. God is going to wipe out the whole generation that spoke out against him. God had led the Israelites to just outside the promised land. And now because the people there are bigger than you and have more weapons than you, you want to go back. And you want a new leader. Do you think the Lord's arms are too short? Outside Caleb and Joshua, there is no talk about how to take the promised land. And we're going to notice later on that God spares Caleb and Joshua because they are over 20 years old. In fact, Joshua will be selected to take the Israelites into the promised land after Moses dies. So now we're 40 years later. We find out Moses' sister Miriam is struck with leprosy, and she dies. Moses' brother Aaron dies. 
And remember in our reading, Miriam and Aaron both spoke out against Moses in front of the people. And then Moses finds out he's not going to the promised land because he struck the rock with his staff to get water instead of speaking to it. So what do the Israelites do? They start complaining once again. And the people rallied against God and against Moses. Excuse me, railed against God and against Moses. What is you, why is it you have led us out of Egypt to slay us in the wilderness? Because there is no food or water, and our soul is weary with this meager food. What does God do? <laughs> he sent serpents, didn't he? Deadly serpents that bit the people, and they died from that bite. The Israelites asked Moses, please go to God. Get rid of these serpents. God tells Moses to make a bronze serpent, put it on a staff, and after, tell the people after they've been bitten, they can look at the serpent and they will live. God spared those who accepted this means of rescue he provided. Healing was not some mag- didn't come magically from this coiled piece of metal, but depended on faith and the power of God's word. Just again, another example of how God wanted the people to have faith in Him only. God didn't want the people to worship other gods or to look at their own power and might. God wanted them to look to Him only. And it's still for us the same today. Those words we talked about last week, our God is a jealous God. He wants you and only you. The Israelites and Moses, they're getting close to the promised land. And they know battles are coming. Moses takes this census of the people and discovers that all the people that rebelled against God 40 years ago are now dead. But now Moses must face the reality that he's not going to the promised land. So Moses begins to prepare for his death. And in doing so, he appoints Joshua, son of Nun, to be the new leader. And then Moses gives this great sermon. And he tells the people two things. Remember who you are and to whom you belong. Remember who you are and to whom you belong. You know, we may have been out here in the desert wandering around all these 40 years but you should not have to wonder who you are and to whom you belong. You are a chosen nation and you belong to God, a God who is jealous for you. So we read at the end, Moses dies on Mount Nebo at 120 years old. Yet scripture says his eyes were not weak nor his strength was gone. Moses saw the promised land with his very own eyes. And yet he dies because he failed one time to follow direction from God. Because Scripture said Moses broke faith with God and Moses did not treat God as holy in the midst of the people. Exodus ends with these words about Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and all the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to his land, and for all the mighty power and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. There was only one Moses. And Moses did exactly as God instructed him to do, except for that one small detail that one time. As Moses was out wandering around the desert, he still had to wonder at times. Because we all know just a few chapters back, he questioned whether he should even be leading Israel at the burning bush. There are many words we can use to describe Moses. Faithful, servant, leader, messenger are just a few. If someone asked you to describe God, this question popped in my head. If you were to describe God, how would you describe him? 
Well, I looked up a few resources. And there are a lot of words to describe God. Where do you even start? Where do you even end? As I said, a few resources tried to describe God. Here are just a few. Trustworthy, forgiving, guide, lasting, master, helper, righteous, immortal, sacred, incredible, glorified, bountiful, matchless, beloved, generous, unparalleled, powerful, wonderful, incomparable, infinite, healing, eternal, deliverer, exceptional, outstanding, awesome, amazing, outstanding, divine, perfect, strength, wise, limitless, boundless, kind, worthy, dedicated, merciful, triumphant, miraculous, precious, great, truthful, reverent, faultless, giving, praiseworthy, remarkable, king, majesty, selfless, beautiful, devoted, glorious, magnificent, protector, ruler, sincere, loving, joyful, marvelous, majestic, savior, caring, strong, mighty, glory, advocate, love, light, zealous, faithful, noble, supreme, redeemer, compassionate, highest, pure, comforting, all-powerful, unequal, just, comforter, counselor, extraordinary, astounding, everlasting, awe-inspiring, good, holy, patient, victorious, gracious, jealous. And that's not the whole list. There are more words, I'm sure, that you can use to describe God. My point is this. Each and every word that I just read to describe God, we believe with our whole heart. And we don't wonder if it describes God or if it did not. Because we know who God is. But when we feel like we are wandering, we forget who God is, don't we? When we wander, God tells us it's time to recalculate, doesn't he? God says, trust me. Follow me. I'll lead you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. And may the peace that surpasses all understanding be with us all. Amen. Ushers will come forward and collect the tithes and the offerings. Please rise.
As Christians, we confess our faith is found in the Apostles' Creed. I ask you, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, we thank you once again for making your story our story. Each one of us is your child, and we are given a part of the greatest story of all time, a story that redeems us and gives us the gift of eternity with you. Please guide us and guard us as you always do as we seek more and more to know your story for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, when we wander, we know that you are continuing to guide us and lead us yet we don't always listen to your voice. Lord, let us listen to your guiding voice in all of our wandering and wondering. And Lord, we pray today, especially for those who have seemed to stray so far from you. We pray that their hearts and minds would be open to knowing your guidance in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Today, we thank you for the calling you give to missionaries all over the world. We pray especially today for Barbara Bentish and Pastor Steve Oliver and family serving in Taiwan. Pastor Rickman and family serving in Latin America. We also pray for the staff at Lighthouse Projects in Dominican Republic. We continue to pray that in every nation there will be people who hear the word of God through your missionaries. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the people who have made this building a church of believers who praise you and know Jesus as their Savior. We focus on our mission statement, growing God's family, showing God's love. We pray that we would reflect the light of Christ in this community and throughout the entire world. We ask that all who come through our doors are shown the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for those who suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually. We name before you today Ron, Dan, Elaine, Gay, Fern, Donna, Darcy, Curtis, Lloyd, Chad, Diana, James, Caleb, Shane, Bob, Mike, Sally, Sherry, Marion, Delilah, Lois, Nancy, and those we name personally at this time. We also pray for caregivers and all others who tend to the sick and hurting. We ask that you would give relief and care to their pain and illness according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you today for the gift of the Lord's Supper. For all who come forward to receive Christ's body and blood this day, that they may rejoice to receive our Lord's forgiveness through this precious gift. Be strengthened in times of doubt and be nourished in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, all these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. We lift up, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. You had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the olivang sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gather in name and remembrance of Jesus. We beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise as you're able. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord looks upon you with His favor and He gives you His peace. You may be seated. In your bulletin, there's several announcements. I got a, I got actually got quite a few I want to hit on. Uh, Board of Directors is this Tuesday, uh, and in and in following that theme, uh, there's an announcement there that they will be having our annual meeting. That's going to be December 11th. 
we'll have one service that day, as we've done last year, I guess this year, whatever. Last, no, we did last year. Uh, so we'll have one service on that, just plan ahead December 11th. We'll have one service, and then we'll have our uh, congregational meeting afterwards. But they need uh, electees for the offices that are listed there. If you got any questions, see Richie's in the back. Um, Candace said last week she talked about her Christmas concert. There's the details in there. It's $20 for a ticket. It's uh, December 10th at the Iowa School for the Deaf. If you got any questions, get a hold of her. I'm late in getting this out. I think it snuck up on me a little earlier than it did last year. But last year, um, Hope Dent Ministries, which helped, helps out. Uh, it's a faith-based organization. Um, Randy, who I've known even before I came to Council of Bluffs, so I've known him a long time ago, uh, helps run. Randy Fontaine runs that organization. Um, and uh, he has sequels, the, the gift uh, thrift stores, but he also has other ministries. So it's their annual fundraiser. Uh, Leslie and I are sponsoring a table again this year, and it's this Thursday. If you'd like to attend, let me know. I've got tickets I can give you. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, trunk or treat, we, we hit that last week, so we're going to try that this year. Uh, do a little trick or treat for the kids in the neighborhood. It's going to be on the 30th. There's a um, little information cards on the wood credenza out there. If you got any questions, let me know. We need people to sign up for giving out candy. And we have other stuff that we bought from Oriental Trading Company. Uh, last, uh, do you have any other announcements? Any announcements? Um, I know next week is the Mercy Meals, right? Everybody hear that? Okay, so Mercy Meals go up to Sioux City next Saturday. There's room for two or three more people for that. Any other announcements? I have one joyous announcement. Our second grandson arrived on Tuesday, and my daughter named him Rhett William. I told her she moved to the favored daughter status already. All right. So this week, uh, Leslie and I are going to hope to sneak away up to Minnesota and go see him real quick and then come back. So mom and baby are both doing great, and uh, thanks for all the prayers and everything. So we're blessed to be able to have our second grandson. All right. Go in peace. Have a great week.